All right, so many have opined about what's happened with young Ja Morant. Uh, a lot of people, and they seem to be of one mind, that uh, it was a silly thing for him to do, uh, that he risked uh, his livelihood, uh, that he had been warned before. So I think uh, there, there uh, most people have a mindset. There are some people now who, um, you know, like J.J. Reddick has spoken out, and I've heard some other, uh, you know, some other op-ed pieces, and they talk about, in America, our affinity for guns, and how even where Ja Morant had the gun, particularly in Tennessee, is is a very a state with a very lax gun law. So it wasn't illegal for him to have the gun. Uh, they went on further to point out that Chris Kamen, uh, a, a congressman, matter of fact, from the very area uh, in Memphis, uh, in, excuse me, in Tennessee, sent out postcards and him and his whole family in AR-15. What, what we have to understand is there has always been a level of hypocrisy when it comes to gun ownership and black people with guns. You don't need to look any further than what happened in the late 60s when the Black Panthers walked into the state capital fully armed. And California at that time was an open carry state. They walked in fully armed. It was their right. And a year later, Ronald Reagan and the NRA wrote the Mulford Act, an, an act designed to strip guns for people. You don't have to look further than what happened to uh, my, a young man in, in, in uh, Minnesota. Uh, he, he was a gun owner, registered gun owner, was shot by the police. The NRA never said one thing. So our uh, relationship or America's relationship with guns and black people has always been tenuous, to say the least. People showing uh, Chris Kamen showing guns. Like I said, I alluded to the congressman showing guns. Here is the thing. When they see white men holding guns, that is what America looks like. When they see a young man who looks like John Moran holding guns, that is why white men say they buy guns. The number one reason for buying and accruing and, and catalog and, and, and stockpiling weapons is for safety. And what do you think it is they want to be safe from? Generally, when they think about buying a gun, they, it, they conjure up somebody in their mind that doesn't look too dissimilar from John Moran. Now, the other thing that's interesting, and I think that when people say, well, they do it, we do it, they do him a disservice because that isn't how this works. The NBA is a business, and it's a business that no matter how hypocritical most businesses can be, they have a right to at least try to protect an image, right? So the NBA at one point had a team in Washington called the Bullets. What did they do? They changed the name from the Bullets to the Wizards because they didn't want to damage their brand. They didn't want it to look hypo hypocritical. At one point, you have three, in the last uh, 10 years, you have three NBA owners that lost their teams in the NBA. You have Donald Sterling, you have Sarver from Phoenix, and you have Danny Fair and what he did in Atlanta. And all of those men, all of those billionaires, had to sell their teams because they were involved in things that were detrimental to the NBA. Other billionaires thought that it was detrimental to them. So they took their teams. Of course, they made billions of dollars of money more. What they did wasn't illegal. It's not illegal to be racist and misogynist, but they thought it was bad for business. So they took those teams away from them. If you will take a team away from a billionaire, imagine what you do with somebody that works for them. And I don't care how much money you have or how much money you are paid. When you sign a check on the back instead of the front, you are an employee. And there is an inherent contract. And if they believe that, though, though, that what you're doing is detrimental to that brand, they will take action. Do you think uh, Snyder wanted to lose the Washington Redskins in the NFL? No, but they thought other billionaires said, you know what? We can't have this. It's, messing, it's bad for business. It messes up the brand. So people who, who try to make these comparisons, even though as apt as they may be, do that young man a disservice. You know that you can't drive around. Uh, with guns, you know that that is against policy. You know they've got. If they will get rid of a billionaire for doing something they thought was detrimental to the league, what do you think they're going to do to you? And I would caution John. I, I know he's heard a lot of advice from a lot of people, but the one thing we can we can all agree on: if you're going to listen to anybody, it shouldn't be anybody you pay. It, it should it shouldn't be anybody who lives off you. It should be somebody who has been where you're going or, go, or going where you're going. That's it. You should, like I said this before, don't listen to people who have nothing to lose because they will lose your shit for you. And it's really simple. If they have told you that something was against policy, you don't do it. I, like, we all know somebody that was on drugs and just couldn't quite shake it and kept doing things that were, that were physiologically and psychologically hooked on a substance. But what substance are you uh, hooked on? Trying to look like a game? That's, that's the substance you're on? 
It is a really simple thing. Listen to people who have been there and who can guide you, not to people who you pay. And the other thing, and we should all remember this, there's really just one rule and it is the golden rule. And it's he with the gold makes the rules. That's a little note from the GED section. We've got the Jazz Report coming up in 15 minutes. It's the D.L. Hughley Show.